So good afternoon, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us this afternoon. This is part six of a six-part series, um, the overview of Get Focused, Stay Focused follow-up modules. So if you've been tuning in for the previous five sessions, you've gotten a lot of great information. Um, and today we're going to be wrapping it up talking about counselor integration into how you implement the follow-up modules. My name is Lauren Wintermeyer. I'm a co-founder of Get Focused, Stay Focused, and I'm really excited to have you with me this afternoon. We will keep you muted until the end of the webinar, at which time we'll open it up for questions and answers and hopefully take care of any burning questions that you may have. So as we go through the webinar, please feel free to jot down notes and think of anything you may want to um, learn more about, and we'll get that covered at the end. So today I'm going to give you just a brief introduction and also go over a review of what we've been covering in the webinar series um, in case you want to go back and listen to any of the archived sessions. And then we'll get right into the meat and potatoes of the counselor integration into how we use the modules in 10th, 11th, and 12th grade. So here's a snapshot of what we've been covering in all of our webinars on the module series. So in the first one, I covered an overview of the Get Focused, Stay Focused initiative and all of the material we covered in the Stay Focused modules. In the second session, Erin Hansen talked about implementation strategies for the modules, and we'll review briefly some of those strategies today. In the third session, Erin went on to talk in depth about the contents of Module 1 and strategies and best practices for teaching that module. In sessions 4 and 5, Amy Bryant was able to cover Modules 2 and 3 in depth, again with the same similar strategy of planning out the scope and sequence of the module and best practices for implementation. And again, today I'm going to focus on how the counselor plays a really important role in all of the Stay Focused modules. If you have it available, it would be great to have the Get Focused, Stay Focused instructional manual nearby, um, as well as a copy of all three modules. We're not going to cover the books in depth today, but rather I want you to think about ways that you can bring those materials back to your departments and or team meetings um, and utilize those in pro conducting professional development on your own. So the idea with the webinars is to give you tools that you can take back to your site um, and use as you're planning for implementation. One of our suggestions would be to actually download these presentations, which we're going to make available through the Get Focused, Stay Focused website and to download them so that you can then present them within your own staff and team meetings. Um, we also have some planning tools that you can download and copy and use with your departments as you plan for the pacing guides for how you're going to implement each module. So again, if you have the materials nearby, it's just kind of a reminder of how you would structure this in a professional development workshop on your own site. So when Erin talked about the implementation of the modules, there were a lot of great suggestions provided. And again, I would really encourage you to go back and listen to the earlier webinars if you're really conceptualizing where these modules are going to fit. So as a quick recap, some of the strategies she talked about were infusing them into an advisory model, um, which would be when all teachers are reaching all students. So essentially, a teacher is assigned a cohort, and they follow that cohort through all four years, and by virtue of every teacher having a cohort, all students are, are met by a specific teacher's instruction. The alternative to that model would be having a master teacher, and instead of students staying with the same teacher, they would rotate through an advisory model with a master teacher, teaching them the contents of the module, and then they would rotate back to another primary instructor. Another way that we've seen the module successfully implemented would be in core subject areas, such as English and history courses. Um, in our local schools, we've seen 10th grade English, 11th grade U.S. History, and 12th grade government and econ. Again, because those are classes that we know all students are required to take as part of their graduation requirements. We've also seen all three modules taught together in a junior year seminar. So in the same way we have the freshman course for either a semester or year-long implementation, we've seen some high schools choose to do all three modules over the course of the junior year. And then we've also seen special um, unique schedules, things like a focused Friday um, as kind of a catchphrase 
So every Friday, students would have a seminar on the follow-up modules. This is a graphic that we'll have available for download as well, which shows some of those implementation strategies. So just quickly at the top of the pyramid there, you'll see we've identified some keystone activities. And this has really been identified by teachers and counselors and administrators in professional development workshops who've said, if we couldn't teach all 16 lessons, these are the ones that we want to be sure we hit every year. So the, I'll show you this graphic in, in, in a different way as well. Another way of implementing would be one contiguous module, so teaching all of module one, for example, in a three-week model, getting through all 16 lessons. And we originally had intended the implementation to follow that guideline, thinking that the month of May, after state testing is over, would be the perfect time to do that. Um, we did realize, however, that everyone's master schedule is different, and so that may not work for your campus. Another model would be teaching a lesson per week, um, so that over the course of a semester you've covered all of the lessons. And then another final opportunity would be one session per month, again, over the entire year covering the lessons. So there are some notes here on the side just saying to refer to page 9-11 of the Program and Instructional Manual um, that gives you an idea about which lessons kind of pair up nicely together. When you're thinking about how to infuse the curriculum in your high schools, we wanted to give you a reminder that students are going to revisit these topics in all three modules. So as you go through, some teachers get really concerned that they don't have enough time for each lesson. And just like the freshman course, we want to remind you that the curriculum will continue to spiral back to the key concepts. So for example, in module one, students will be doing online research about post-secondary options in Module 2, they're actually going to compare all those post-secondary options and look at strategies for college affordability. And then in Module 3, they're actually developing a college-going timeline of all the things they need to do in senior year and to get done on their steps to post-secondary. So it's really sequential, and it builds upon itself with each module. It's also really important to remember that as students work on their plans, the more effort they put into this, the more ownership they take on the outcomes of those plans. And this program is really built on that premise of increasing intrinsic motivation for all students. Um, we know that students are more likely to be successful if school is relevant to their future and their own personal goals. It's also really important to think about why students need to have this structured in an entire class setting. So by having the students participate in a classroom-based guidance process and having the online plan available to everyone on campus, then it can be used differently by counselors, advisors, instructors, um, but everyone on campus can be working with students based on what the student has articulated they want to do. So having that data available to everyone makes it more meaningful across the campus community. Um, I know there are a lot of programs that advocate for online tools more as a career development resource, but we really advocate for a structured, comprehensive program um, because we think it's a lot deeper in what it can cover. So students aren't creating a random 10-year plan with no thought. They're spending an entire semester or possibly a year on that original plan so that when they meet with a, in a coach setting or with their counselors, those professionals know that the student has put a lot of time and hours into that plan and that it's truly meaningful for them. This is the other graphic that I referred to before in kind of outlining those keystone activities. So as you look through this overview of the lesson descriptions for each of the 16 lessons in each module, you can see the green star is highlighting those keystone activities. The reason that we developed each module to be 16 lessons was with the idea that it's a minimum of 16 hours required for one unit of college credit. And originally, we had our freshman course offered for three units, and we thought it would be great to have a dual enrollment option for the students to earn one additional credit in 10th, 11th, and 12th grades. And we do have some partners around the state that are doing this with their colleges and high school partnerships currently. So again, there's some information in the instructional manual on page 620 or 6-20 if you want to get more information about that.
And just as a final reminder, I know if you've listened to the other webinars, you've heard this before, but we just want to remind you that all of this is designed to be integrated into academic courses. Um, it's all built on the common core standards around college and career readiness, as well as English language arts. And we want you to realize that we're not asking teachers to do something beyond what they're already supposed to be doing. This is really about seamless integration and contextualization of learning. So across all disciplines, we know that teachers are expected to make sure students explicitly understand the relevance of the course content to the world of work and life beyond high school. So the idea with the follow-up modules is just that, um, to really build on Common Core and seamlessly integrate into the standards those lessons that help students be invested in what they're learning across all disciplines. Keep in mind that with all three modules, students are going to start and review their 10-year plan and then build upon that plan as they work through the module. Um, the goal of Get Focus, Stay Focus is not to lock students into one pathway, but rather to open up their eyes to all of the options available and to help them make informed choices about the pathways they want to pursue. So as they work through those structured activities, the goal is that each year they're updating and refining their 10-year plan along with their own growth and development. Now we're getting into really the crux of why we wanted to have this special webinar focused on the role of counselors. I think it's incredibly important to just remind everybody that counselors are specially trained. So this course in no way replaces the important work that counselors are doing. And most of you, um, if you're calling in, have probably heard from me at some time before, but you probably know that I am a full-time counselor at a community college. And we struggle a lot in our roles as student service professionals in articulating what we do and how that is different from what we would call perhaps a paraprofessional um, or someone at the classified level. So someone who is an academic um, advisor or coach or someone who provides information is very different than someone who provides counseling services. So if you're not familiar with the Ask a National model, that's the American School Counselor Association, they provide really clear guidelines about the roles of student or, sorry, school counselors. And one of the important components would be in providing guidance lessons. Um, most states require that high school counselors actually have a credential. So in California, we call it a pupil personnel services credential. And within that credential, you are supposed to be going out into the classroom and providing instruction um, in addition to the counseling you do in your office. So on the, it, within these guidance lessons, they're supposed to cover topics ranging from things like career to education, planning, um, and personal social issues as well. So counselors have a unique skill set to offer in supporting students throughout the Get Focused, Stay Focused journey. Um, as I've talked with middle and high school counselors, the feedback I've received when we talk about the follow-up modules in the freshman course is that they really want to be invited into the classroom and they're really wanting administrator support to be able to provide more of those guidance lessons. So I think one of the challenges I've heard from our K-12 counselors is that they're often on so many different committees and their time is so tightly scheduled that they often don't get the opportunity to get out into many classrooms. But as they learn about Get Focused, Stay Focused, they say, wow, this would be great because now I could reach a much larger population in giving them, kind of front-loading the information that then we're going to follow up on in individual counseling appointments. And that's really what the role of this would be, is that the more we can give students information early and often, the easier it will be for them to digest and to navigate our very complex educational system. So thinking about the role that counselors play, you know, if you are a counselor, part of this is going to be about advocating for yourself. If you're administrators, I would encourage you to talk with your counselors on campus to really think about how you can give them some release time to get out into the classrooms. And if you are, you know, thinking about how to structure time to meet with all students, I think the 10-year plan offers a great resource that when you do follow up with students as a counselor, you can more holistically serve them because now they've already had that information front-loaded and you're really just following up with them. When you think about working with instructors, and some of you listening in may be instructors, really think about how you're taking a team approach to this. So within your teams, you're going to need to create time, 
not just for the whole school buy-in to the Get Focused, Stay Focused initiative, um, which is really just helping everybody to understand the goals and vision for the initiative, but also for that continued professional development. So for example, when schools are first launching Get Focused, Stay Focused, they usually start with just focusing on the freshman course. So they'll start with the professional development for the freshman teachers and getting everybody on board with how to log in and use the 10-year plan and how to enhance their classroom experience so that students are walking away from that course with a great 10-year plan online. But then after the first year, the school starts to think, wow, we really want to offer the follow-up modules. And sometimes they haven't done their professional development ahead of time and they end up scrambling. So what we're trying to do with this professional development series is to help you to think ahead. So for example, if you're at a high school this year that's teaching the freshman course for the first time, this is really the time of year heading into spring semester that you want to be thinking about implementing module one in 10th grade, and what is that going to look like, where does it fit in the master schedule, and how are you going to then train the teachers who are going to teach that module. So halfway through this year, I'd say, is the time to focus on module one. Next year, as you're rolling out module two, again, you would want to do that training ahead of time and so on for module three. Everybody's at a different level, though, with their implementation, and some schools are already implementing the modules and are just looking for better ways to do it. So this is going to take that continued professional development and time to work across all stakeholders on campus. So part of your planning time would be devoted just to the concept and sharing you know, how, how these pacing guides can be used with all the instructors, um, but also how it's going to fit in with the larger school vision. So how does it fit into how counselors are, are working with students? How does this fit into the scheduling of courses over the course of the year? Um, and as a counselor, are there things you're already doing on campus that would fit into certain module lessons? So when you look at the overview of the lesson topics um, and you sit down with your team, you might be able to just put a little star by the lessons that you feel like you're already covering. And maybe the module will just give you a little bit more structure to the scope and sequence of that lesson and then allow the students the opportunity to update their 10-year plan. But this is really about making sure everyone on the campus is aware of what's going on at each developmental year of the program. So if you start with the freshman course, you still want to make sure everybody else on the school campus knows what's happening in the freshman course, that everybody knows they can log into the 10-year plan and has strategies for how to use that. What we don't want to have this theme is that it's going to be a burden placed on just one instructional group on campus. So, for example, if one grade level subject area is charged with the implementation of Module 1, we would want to make sure that they're supported by their counselor colleagues so that perhaps those lessons could be divided up ahead of time. Um, for example, if I'm a counselor, I might want to go in at lesson one when the students are updating their plan, and then maybe two more times throughout the implementation. And then if I'm the classroom teacher, I'm going to feel a lot better knowing that I have some support and somebody coming in to help me with those lessons, because I understand the ratio of teacher to student is often less than ideal, and getting through that much content can be rather daunting. So again, in thinking about how you're going to plan with your teams, I would encourage you to review all the lessons and really think about how you can do this as seamlessly as possible with the things you're already doing, rather than seeing this as one more thing to add to the list. In continuing with this idea, I'd encourage you to really look at a pacing guide ahead of implementation so that counselors are scheduled far in advance to teach those particular lessons and that they have support from the administration to be out of their offices during that time. Again, the earlier you have that pacing guide, the less confusion there will be as the semester goes along. So again, the lessons could also be team taught. Um, and when I say that, one of the things I think of would be that lesson one when students are reviewing their 10-year plan, counselors could come into the computer lab and circulate with the teacher and checking in with students on an individual basis about what they remembered about their original 10-year plan, things that are jumping out to them that they may want to change before they even start on the follow-up lessons. 
Um, counselors could also exclusively teach the lessons and just give the teachers a break. Um, I think that's always a good thing. Everybody needs a little extra prep time. Um, and it can be really nice for counselors to get to engage with students in that way because oftentimes that's sort of a luxury they aren't afforded, but it really deepens the relationship they have with, with, with the students on campus. I'd also recommend that counselors can join in any time the students are in the lab. So as students continue through the module and they continue to refine their plans, counselors could pop in and out as their schedules allow just to check in and answer questions that students have, particularly as they're working on lessons around college exploration, um, looking at financial aid, thinking about scholarship applications, and writing personal statements. Those are things that counselors are specially trained to support. So all of those lessons would be a perfect place for a counselor to come in and be available to students and teachers as needed. So one of the things I want you to think about with the 10-year plan is that you do need to have technology available. And if that's an issue on your campus, it's something that you want to think about before you start implementing because we know it can be really stressful if you're trying to get students to be current with their 10-year plan and they don't have internet access at home and you don't have enough lab space on campus. So again, thinking back to that master schedule, the more you can plan ahead and have a schedule worked out for all of the teachers, whether it's a rotation through lab time, or if you have, um, what we used in our district was we got rotate or, um, mobile carts that were charging carts that we would have a set of laptops on the carts or a set of iPads. So all of the teachers of either the Get Focused ninth grade course or the Stay Focused follow-up module could reserve those carts at different times throughout the week and make sure all the students had enough time to keep updating their plans. So um, again, this is just a, a really important component because if the students only do the work in the workbook, it doesn't transition with them. Oftentimes they'll lose the book or they forget about it, but if they have that online platform and they download the mobile app, then the students can take it with them wherever they go. Um, and as a college counselor, selfishly, I want them to have it online so that they can use it when they come to see me at the college for counseling as well. So this is something that we're not going to do during the webinar, but this is something that I would want you to do with your school site. So we would encourage you to choose a lesson from each of the three modules and then to read through the lesson keeping in mind how you want to teach that to your student population. Within the program and instructional manual, of course, there's more ideas for lesson enhancement, but this would be a great way of just getting your uh, colleagues on campus familiar with the content of the module and to identify in each of the modules a lesson that really jumps out to them as interesting, fun, relevant, maybe something they're already doing in the classroom. And then we have a template that you'll be able to download, again, when you do this professional development on your campus, in which you would identify the lesson objective, how much time you need, whether or not you're going to need the computer lab or perhaps that mobile cart if you have that available. And then to look at what vocabulary you might need to front load. We realize that the language of post-secondary pathways of educational and career pathways is often vocabulary that's very new to students and we don't want you to get bogged down with that in the lesson. So sometimes just front-loading that vocabulary, having a word wall, a word of the week, something like that could be really useful. There's also going to be an opportunity on your planning sheet to come up with enrichment ideas. So a part of this feeds into just the best practices strategies that Erin and Amy covered in the previous webinars, so that as you look through the module lessons, the idea is to think of how you bring those lessons to life through authentic experiences. And what I mean by that is, is it a lesson where you might want to bring in a guest speaker, where the counselor and teacher may be working together on instruction? Um, is there an opportunity for students to go out and have an authentic experience in the working world, uh, maybe conducting a job shadow? Um, one of the lessons in the third module is to do a mock interview experience. So, Rather than just doing the mock interview in the classroom, perhaps you get outside volunteers to come in who are industry professionals to actually conduct the interviews for your students. Um, and all of that does take planning and coordination, but I can say from having done that in my own class that it's extremely valuable to the students and their feedback is so positive that it's worth all the logistics involved. So as you do this planning within your site team, Again, think back to lessons that you're already teaching. 
do you want to just start with one lesson per module and really plan that out? Or do you think you could take on more than one lesson to really come up with how you want to standardize um, the um, approach to implementation? So if you as a counselor are coming in to help with this, is there something that you're doing that fits in seamlessly and maybe you just want to keep it that one thing? Or do you see that you may want to bridge out and choose a few different lessons so that from the get-go you are seen as an integral part of this implementation? Um, again, teachers are often going to just take charge because they're used to getting a curriculum and following the scope and sequence. So this is going to take sort of a step back for all of you working in partnership to say, what would be best for the students? What would be best to have a counselor present versus a teacher? And then also think about the time of year that's best for you to present this particular lesson and or lessons. So for example, in module three, which would um, be taught in the 12th grade, we would ideally want the first portion of that to be taught in the beginning of 12th grade um, or at the end of 11th grade because it's going to get into all the things students need to do in 12th grade. So if you wait till the end of the year, it's going to be too late. They would have already needed to have applied for FAFSA, for scholarships, for colleges, et cetera. So it's really important to look at the, at the content of each module and make sure you're integrating it at the right time. Part of the reason that timing is so important as well is we all have ebbs and flows within our semesters or trimesters. And we know that there are certain times that are peak demand times for counselors when there's no way they could be out of their office going and doing a guidance lesson. So that's really important to think about what logistically works for your schedule and how can you infuse that with the pacing and implementation of the modules. Some of the additional suggestions I would make are just around the ways that you as a counselor could help the classroom teachers to make this program really shine. Um, things like helping to facilitate career fairs, as I mentioned before, getting guest speakers I understand can be challenging, but sometimes there are folks within the counseling office, even support staff, who may be able to do that on um, maybe more of a clerical capacity and calling guest speakers, sending out emails, arranging parking passes for them, visitor passes, all of those logistics that it takes to get guests on your campus. Um, it's really important to find out who within the campus community could take on that responsibility. We were really fortunate um, in my former district, we had an agency within our county office of education. Um, it was called Partners in Education, and they would actually help to screen local industry representatives who wanted to come in as guest speakers. And they actually did all the scheduling and everything. It was such a great program. So if you're interested, I would look up Partners in Education in Santa Barbara, California, and maybe look at their program model and see if there's anyone in your local community that has a similar structure. Um, again, as the counselor, think about all of the college and post-secondary researching that students need to do in order to make an informed decision. Rather than students randomly choosing a college to apply to just because it sounds good or it's at a great location or their friends are going there, we want students to make that choice based on their career goals and the fact that there's certain training that's going to be better to help them reach their goals. And of course, there's certain institutions that are going to offer that training. So that, to me, is one of the most important places for counselors to come in and share their expertise about all those post-secondary pathways. Helping students get an authentic experience on college campuses, I think, is also critical. I'm not saying it has to be a counselor who does that, but having a team from your high school take groups of students on those campus visits is so valuable. It really helps to set the mindset for students that they can see themselves on those campuses. Um, I often tell our students at the community college, because there, many of them want to transfer to a four-year college, that they should not accept admission anywhere they haven't visited. Because as someone told me this week, you don't know what you haven't seen and experienced. So, if a student's never set foot on campus and they think they're going to go there, they may be really disappointed. Um, so we would always encourage them to get out and visit campuses. I know that can be logistically challenging, um, but hopefully there's ways to do that, whether it's through um, programs that are clubs, like college-going clubs on campus that maybe fundraise, um, or if there's grants available in your community. I just think that's a really important step for students to take. I mentioned before the idea of job shadowing, and I would add to that internships um, and informational interviews. 
So a lot of times students will come to a counseling appointment expressing sort of their questioning around career pathways. And I think counselors play such an important role in helping students to really be bold and put themselves out there to network and to meet with people who are in their dream job or in a job that they're just thinking sounds interesting. Um, I often tell students, I think, until they see a job in action and talk to somebody who's doing it, they really don't have an idea of whether or not it might be a good fit for them. So again, this may fall not directly on the counselor, but maybe within the counseling department and support staff to create a network of, of professionals in the community who are open to having high school students come and shadow them and do an informational interview. I mentioned before the idea of doing mock interviews. And again, if you can't get outside professionals in, I think counselors would be great people to come in and interview students and give them great feedback. And then working on the college application workshops, FAFSA workshops, scholarship application workshops, um, all of those things that you're probably already doing would fit really well in with the integration of the model, or the modules rather, um, into the full high school experience. In thinking in general how to support Get Focus, Stay Focused, um, you know, I come from this uh, from the counselor perspective and thinking about how do we help our campus community to really see this visioning, vision rather, of serving every student every year in a meaningful way. And I think part of that comes from working with parents and helping parents understand the value of this program if it's new to your campus. Um, a lot of times change is difficult for schools and for communities. And one of the things we've seen is, that can be so helpful is if you can go and present at those back to school nights or any um, parent events and let them know what the course is about. And as you have students who've gone through the course, bring the students in to present to the parents and community members. Um, they're the best representation of what the class is about and why it's valuable. I would also recommend attending ELAC and DLAC meetings. Um, if you're not familiar with that, those would be the English Learner Advisory Committee or the District English Learner Advisory Committee. So within the state of California, every K-12 site has an ELAC, and this is really designed to help the parents of English language learners understand um, the opportunities available for their students. And then each ELAC has a representative that goes to the DLAC at the district level. So I used to go to DLAC meetings, present about Get Focused, Stay Focused, so that each school site representative could take that information back to their site. Um, and this would relate also to things like site council meetings, to PTA meetings, or however your um, parent organizations are titled. And just thinking about all the ways that you can share information with all stakeholders. Um, and especially thinking about reaching all populations. So oftentimes the parents of our underrepresented student populations may not be coming to as many parent information events. And this is where you really want to find um, those audiences. Where can you get in where the parents are coming to? So whether it's a, a committee meeting like that or whether there's a special community event going on and you can have a table set up, just really be creative and thinking about reaching the parents of all students. When you're thinking about scheduling counseling appointments, um, Carpinteria High School had a great model where they would meet with every student and their parents or guardians in the summer between ninth and 10th grade. And then during that meeting, they would pull up the student's 10-year plan that they had created in that previous school year and review that to make sure that the parents and students are all on the same page about what that student is thinking they want to pursue throughout the rest of their high school and into post-secondary experiences. Some of our successful schools have also developed newsletters um, just as a way of sharing, shining with the, or sharing with the community that shining news um, and really highlighting all of the special things that are going on within their programs. And within this, again, also providing the support of the classroom teachers is so important because throughout all four years of the program, they're going to need support of counselors. As a counselor, you know you're writing lots of letter re of recommendation probably right now as your students are doing common applications and scholarship applications. I know I've been writing my share in the last couple months as well. Um, but that's a huge help to your students. And I know it's a lot of work, but that's just one of those key things that we want students to realize that they need to give you plenty of lead time to write those letters. And that, that request of a formal letter of recommendation is something they're going to need to do throughout their life and career journey. We also invite you to participate in partnerships with your community college and four-year college counselors. So at my college, we just last week hosted our 
high school counselor exchange. And we actually invite all of our county's high school counselors to come to our college campus for a full day of professional development. If your community colleges aren't doing that, perhaps you could reach out to them and talk about ways that you can do cross-training. So as much as we want to give them updates from our college, we also ask them to give us updates of what's going on in their high schools. And it's exciting for so many of them. Get Focus, Stay Focus is a brand new graduation uh, requirement. And they're gung-ho on trying to implement this the best way they can. So then our responsibility as community college counselors is to make sure that as those students matriculate to us, we continue to follow up with their 10-year plan in a meaningful way to keep those students on track. And as I put in the last bullet point, you know, the possibilities are endless. I think there's so many opportunities to be innovative and creative with how you implement this program and support one another, whether you're an administrator, counselor, and or teacher. Um, but really thinking out of the box, I think, makes it fun and makes it more enjoyable for you as the implementer. Some of the considerations just to think about, again, are within the program and instructional manual uh, we put here just to review those pages, 6, 15 through 18, um, and just thinking about how important it is to make sure everyone is cognizant of that word advising um, and the fact that the advising that takes place in the Get Focused, Stay Focused classroom is very, very different than the counseling that takes place when students meet with their counselor. So I just always want to come back to that and say, you know, the role of counseling is so valuable and important, and what a counselor does is very different than what a classroom teacher does. Um, and one is not trying to replace the other or vice versa. We all need to work in tandem to make sure we're providing the best wraparound services for our students. So this program does not replace the role of a school counselor. Um, hopefully, though, it's taken the burden off of counselors who have that daunting ratio um, of the number of students to counselor, and it's, it's allowing the classroom teacher to front load really important information so that when the counselor meets with the students, we can just maximize all of that and make for much more effective counseling appointments. So on the bottom of the page here is our website, and I would encourage you to log in to get any additional information you may need um, and or to get our contact information. You can send us emails, let us know how we can help you. But I'm going to ask Robin to unmute the participants, and if anybody does have questions, we definitely have time to answer those. Well, it sounds like there's no questions coming up, which either means I covered all of your questions or you're still thinking, which is totally great. Um, you can always email us and we can follow up with you at a later time if you'd like. Um, I'd like to thank you for being on the webinar this afternoon. And just as a reminder, all webinars in the six-part series will be archived so that you can go back and listen to the recorded sessions. And we are going to make all of the um, keynote presentation materials available for download so that you could Again, use them with your site teams as you continue to do professional development. So I'd like to thank you again for calling in this afternoon. And if you have any questions, again, feel free to email us through the website here, and we will follow up with you just as soon as we can. I hope everyone has a great holiday season. Thanks again.